Hi Trinity Church London, Daniel here. I trust you're doing well. Um, welcome as well if you're not part of the church but you're just uh, linking in and being with us today. We're so grateful for you to be with us. I want to say if you're not a Christian and you're exploring Christianity, you're exploring prayer maybe for the first time, I want to say you're so welcome. We love journeying with people who are agnostic, skeptical, doubting, just asking questions whether they have a faith or not. I just want to say you're welcome. You're free to ask any question at any point. Um, our email is hello at trinitychurchlondon.com. Do get in touch with us, we'd love to hear from you. If you've been invited by a friend to just watch this service, you're welcome. Ask your friend, what is this about? If you've got any questions, we'd, we'd love to help you on your journey of faith. I wanna read some verses of scripture before we come to worship. And uh, it really speaks to us and very helpfully in this moment about how we almost pastor our own heart. Because it can be easy in moments like this of uncertainty to listen to the fearful speculations of our own heart and mind. And we can create worlds and scenarios in the future that cause anxiety and depression. And yet what the Bible teaches us as Christians to do is actually speak to our heart, not listen to our heart, but speak to our heart. And Psalm 103 does that for us. So wherever you are, whether you're sitting or standing with your family by yourself, if you've got kids running around you right now, just listen to these words and speak to your heart with these words for a moment. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, bless the Lord. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna lift up his name, Darren, Cheryl, Kira, Amy, Daniel, they're gonna lead us in worship. Let's bless his holy name together, amen. Good morning, Trinity Church London. I hope you are well, wherever you are. And I just would like to welcome you to come into the courts of the King with us today. I just want to remind us that there's nothing we can do to make ourselves worthy, but that Jesus has paid the price for us. And we can enter into the presence of God by the new and living way that is Jesus. Amen. We're going to start by singing of his amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, Savior.
hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that again. My hope is built.
Jesus light the way by the power of your word. I am restored, I am redeemed by your spirit. I am free, and I will fall at your feet, and I will fall at your feet. At Trinity Church London, we asked, what is God teaching you during this lockdown? And this is what some had to say. During this lockdown, God has been teaching me to be all the more sensitive to the prompting of His Spirit. And He's also been teaching me that as much as I like or I want to figure things out on my own, I need you and we need each other. During lockdown, God has been teaching me to be still and know that He is God. In the last six months I've been through a lot and it's been a lot of pressure and uh, when the lockdown started I realised that I was quite happy to, for the world to be shut out. Um, and although I've been working long hours during the lockdown and managing two, two teenage boys, um, I have felt more peace and God has been removing the kind of unnecessaries and the anxieties that we all usually face and just giving me that sense of peace and being more in his presence to be still and know that he is during God. this lockdown god's been teaching me about graciousness and patience as i've struggled sometimes to communicate effectively with my colleagues in our isolation for me god has taught me that he's trustworthy and that i can trust him to protect me and this has been in particular when i've gone shopping and people have been right close to me and i'm thinking oh my goodness me um I am frightened about what I might get from these people. But God has said to me, I am the one who orders your steps and you can trust me with every aspect of your life. During this lockdown, God has been teaching me that he's more concerned with the attitude of my heart than with the work of my hands. To be obedient, even when it doesn't make sense. 
and to seek the approval of God and not from people. During this lockdown, God has been teaching me to be more thankful for the things that he has given me and to appreciate his generosity more and that I only need him to rely on to get through any difficult circumstance. During this lockdown, Father God has been teaching me that he is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow and that his kingdom is an unshakable kingdom and I have great confidence in that. As much as I have hope and confidence in my eternal salvation, even in these difficult times. During this lockdown, God has taught me to be resilient, and patient, and to just trust Him. Because there's so many things not in my control, but He is in total control. During this lockdown, God has been teaching me that He is our rock, He is our firm foundation, and because of that, we can have hope in any situation. During this lockdown, God has been teaching me, when the world says, keep your distance, God says, come to me. When the world says, don't breathe that air, God says, I'm the air that you need. I've learned God is enough for me. During this lockdown, God has been teaching me to um, put him at the centre of my life um, rather than having other relationships and other distractions um, sort of as my number one um, to kind of take things back and, and have him as number one again. During this lockdown, God has been teaching me about trusting in him and not being afraid, not living a fearful life. Luke 12 verses 4 to 7 has really encouraged me and blessed my heart. Hello, good morning Trinity Church London. Um, I just want to take this time to pray for the government, to pray for our leaders. It says in the Bible that we should pray for those that are in power over us, pray for their wisdom, pray for peace for our nation and pray for blessing. So just this morning, let us pray. We need all of these things in, in, in abundance. So let's just pray for the UK now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we come in your almighty name. We thank you that during these times of instability and storms, that you're our rock and protector, that you will lead and guide us, that you will comfort us in times of trouble. And Father, we lift up the British government today. We pray that you would grant them great wisdom for the prime minister, for the cabinet, for those in positions of authority, that they would be able to make the right decisions at the right time. We pray that you would guide them with regard to policy around coronavirus and these new regulations on, on moving from a lockdown. Father, I pray that they would be able to prioritise people's health, but also jobs and livelihood. Father, that you would meet people in their deepest needs. Lord, we pray for those that are depressed, those that are, that are, that are stuck uh, socially and in very difficult places. We pray that you would comfort and bless them. Lord, we pray for the different departments within the government. We pray for the NHS and health. We pray for those that are working, that are carers, that are providing infrastructure, uh, jobs right throughout our land. Lord, we pray that you would protect them, that you would be gracious to them, you would bless them, and that they would be encouraged in, in, this dif in these difficult days. And Father, we pray for the scientists and those that are working on finding a cure and finding a vaccine to COVID. We pray that you would speed up this process and very soon uh, a vaccine would be found. Father, we pray for those that are, that, are, that are struggling. Father, we pray those that need comfort, those that are, are feeling depressed, that you would meet their needs. And Lord, we don't just pray for the UK, for England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, but we want to lift our eyes to the world and pray more globally. We pray for those nations that are um, in, in dire need and financial difficulties, those that are still in conflict and violence. Lord, we pray for Yemen, we pray for Iraq, we pray for Syria. We pray for those that are, are struggling at this time, Lord, that you would intervene. Uh, and Father, we pray globally for those that need your touch. I pray that you would be everything that they need today. In Jesus' name.
Amen. I just wanted to give you a really quick um, update on the special offering. If you've been with us, you'll know that the last week we've been taking up a special offering for the mission of the church in this moment. Um, Pat has been uh, receiving that and uh, counting that and calculating it. I just want to say thank you so much if you've given. Um, this is an incredible moment for us. These are just moments of joy to know the kind of people that we're journeying with and what God has got planned for us. Um, we're not going to give the total this week. We're going to wait till next Sunday to announce the, the final amount that we've given and that God has blessed us with for the next stage of our mission together. Um, if you haven't yet given and you plan to, there's still time we'd love you to do that uh, the details are on our website um, trinitychurchlondon.com and you can go to the giving page the best way is uh, the first way if you see on the giving page uh, just an online bank transfer special offering may 2020 um, and next week we're going to celebrate what god has done thank you so much Well, good day to you. It's lovely to be bringing you the Word of God today. And uh, before I come to Scripture, I'd love to just say a very big thank you for um, the way you've responded to our COVID-19 appeal. We've been able to spread resources far and wide across the nations and bring tremendous relief to many, many who are facing struggles. So thank you very much. And may I ask that we continue to stand together during these uncertain days. Let's go to scripture, Joshua chapter 3. I want to read from verse 1. And in the ESV, the heading above this chapter says, Israel crosses the Jordan. Verse 1, then Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out from Shittim. And they came to the Jordan and he and all the people of Israel, and they lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, As soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priest, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not go near it in order that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. And so they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. We join Joshua and the people of Israel at the at the climax of the story of how God had rescued them out of captivity with tremendous promises of a land and an inheritance that would be theirs. And now the moment had come where they're just about to cross over into it. A new era was certainly about to be birthed. And one can imagine the anticipation, maybe even a, a deep excitement among the people, the, the, the voices carrying across the, the large camp in anticipation of what they were about to do. But I guess if one thought about it a bit longer, I, I would think that there would also be quite a measure of apprehension and uncertainty, maybe even a, a little bit of fear in some, because as we heard they had not passed this way before. Spies had gone in and they'd heard stories of tremendous cities with walls that went up to the heavens. They'd heard about hostile people groups, armed, wanting to defend their land. But yet in the midst of all of it, they'd heard that God had promised a land that flowed with milk and honey. They'd heard that they would reap what they hadn't sown. And the spies who had gone in most recently had come back and said, the Lord has given all of us into our hands. And so there would have been all these mixed emotions. And it was during this time that the commanders go in and say to people, get ready. And then that amazing statement that applies so much to us today. We have not passed this way before. 
Much has already been said about these days that you and I live in. I've heard things like this. We're in unprecedented days, and I guess we are. I've heard others say nothing like this has been experienced by this generation before. I would say absolutely. Others have said to me, life has so radically changed. For Heather and I, that's definitely the case. And I've heard it said the world as we know it will never be the same again. That's quite possible. Like Joshua and the family of God, we've not been this way before. But if we were to take the words of the commanders to the people and put it in a single sentence, I believe that one could say that they said, prepare and pay special attention. There was a readiness required from the people. They had not been this way before. And there was something unique that was needed from the people at this moment in time. Two weeks ago, a dear friend and I had a conversation. We hadn't chatted for some time. And the conversation immediately goes of how everything's changed. We're no longer meeting. We can't see family. We talked through it all. And then he quoted the scripture just as a throw, uh, throw, throwaway comment and it arrested me. And I thought, oh, it's so true. And so for the last few weeks, I've been meditating on Joshua 3, 1 to 6. And I believe that Joshua and his people had four things in their favor as they crossed over. And I believe that they are just as relevant to us today in this moment as they were to Joshua and his people at that time. I believe that if we were to lay hold of them and allow even a measure of them to become our lifestyle, it would serve us so well as a family of God. So let me go through these four thoughts as quickly as I can this morning. The first thing that I believe that was in their favour, number one, is they crossed over with promises. Their actions that day weren't just an ambitious plan. This wasn't a young leader wanting to go and just do something and see what the result would be. This wasn't a land grab. This was a response to the promises of God. These were people with promises from the God of all creation. Brothers and sisters, we too have promises. We have promises of eternal security. We have promises of death being defeated. We have promises from Jesus saying, I will build my church. Nothing will stand against it. Nothing will hinder my purposes. What a promise. We have promises. um, One of my most precious scriptures where he stands with his disciples and he looks them in the, in the eye, one after another. And he says to them, I will be with you always to the very end. And this is at a point where he's just about to ascend and leave them. And then in Hebrews, he's ever interceding for us. One who has experienced all the hardship and the temptation we would ever know. He's praying for us in these days. Tremendous promises. And then there are promises that we have as a family of churches. There are promises that you have. And I want to say to you, like Joshua and the people of God, we need to hold on to the promises God's given us. This present pandemic mustn't undermine the promises of God. Heather and I spent a a morning recently in prayer and we found ourselves praying about the promises of God. We went right back to the time, the earliest time we could remember when God gave us promises as a young married couple. And here we are all those years later praying, Lord, you said this and you did it. Lord, you promised that and look what you've done. Lord, you said that and there's the fruit of it. And then we prayed through the promises that await fulfillment. And we felt faith arise. Like Joshua and the people of God, we have promises. Let's hold on to them. But the second thing they had in their favor 
is number two, they were accompanied by God's presence. If you listened carefully as I read the story, you would have heard that the Ark of the Covenant uh, went ahead of them, about 300 yards ahead. The Ark went with the Levitical priests. And the commander said to the people, fall in behind it. Don't go too close. Let it get ahead so that you can keep your eyes on the presence of God, which the ark signified the presence of God. It will show you the way. We've not passed this way before. So stay behind. Keep your eyes on the presence of God and it will show you the way. In the same way, even though our present path is difficult, disruptive, sad, costly. God has promised that he would send one who would journey with us, his Holy Spirit, the very presence of God that would come and dwell in us. He said, I will be with you always, not sometimes, always. And what a joy. We, as we journey, like Joshua, the presence of God goes before us. We don't need an ark. We don't need a vessel or a building. We don't even need great numbers around us to experience the presence of God. He's in you and I as we receive him. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said. We don't pass this way alone. And even this morning, you might be sitting alone in your apartment been locked down for weeks or maybe you're sitting with your family you might have faced grief and loss maybe you are in mourning at the loss of a loved one maybe there's a measure of uncertainty or fear maybe your job's at risk maybe the unknown has gripped you may i encourage you right now change your posture Maybe, maybe just for a moment, lean into God right now. Sit forward. Close your eyes. Maybe just open your hands right where you are now. And just allow the, the presence of God to come. Jesus said, when I send my Holy Spirit, he will come upon you. He will be your comforter. That word means he will fortify you. He will empower you. He will be your guide. He will be your counsel. He will show you the way. Right now, we can experience God just where we are. We do not pass on alone. Maybe you're anxious about the future. Well, let me say to you, let the presence of God come and experience the peace of Christ that settles all these uncertainties. For Joshua and the people of God, they kept their eyes on the ark, it went into the river, the water uh, held back and formed up at the town uh, upriver, Adam it's called, and they crossed over as on dry land, the presence of God that achieves the most incredible things. It's for you and I, today in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. The third thing they had in their favour is they prepared themselves well. Joshua goes among the people and he says, consecrate yourselves. And that word is about, uh, it's a word of preparation. They got themselves ready and there were certain rituals they had to follow that now in this new covenant we don't. But in the same way, brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but we're in our sixth week of lockdown and so much has changed. I want to be honest and say that for the first few weeks, I found it so difficult to get any sort of a routine and try and work out what day it is. And uh, it just felt so jumbled at times. But what I discovered, and I want to encourage you this today, is that this is a perfect time to prepare yourself, to prepare yourself. It's a perfect time to establish routines and behaviors 
that will serve us so well that when we come together again, we come through this difficult time, we will find we are prepared to cross over into this new era and all that God's going to do. And imagine how different the church will be if God's people are all prepared. Get yourself ready. Don't waste the time. Don't just mark time. Work out just a perfect time, perfect place. Put repetition in place. It'll serve you so well. Over the weeks of lockdown, I've been studying the book of Hebrews. And if I'm honest, Hebrews has been quite a mystery to me at times. I have loved it. And when I got to chapter five, the writer to the Hebrews starts to speak about maturity. And one of the sentences, the verses says that, in, in verse uh, chapter 5, verse 14, he, he says, we're talking about maturity, he says it comes um, by uh, those who are trained by constant practice. Trained by constant practice. And it really hit me and I thought, wow, yes, it's true. With the, with the word of God and in prayer and encouragement of others and all the things that we do, worship, it comes with constant practice and we get better and better and as I considered that verse I, I thought of some of the the social media I've seen of of sports uh, sport personalities those at the the top of the game tennis players or cricketers or swimmers um, footballers where they they showed what they are doing and in their homes or in their backyard they practicing and practicing and they, they call that activity the um, establishment of, of muscle memory. And you can imagine that tennis player, he's, he's hitting the shot, he's returning the shot, he's watching the ball and he does it over and over and over again until that moment that he gets on the court. And when that ball comes at him, he's memory, his muscle memory is so well trained and put in place that his racket and his arm and his weight and his thinking are all in the same place at the same time and the perfect shot is played. We have such an opportunity to prepare ourselves well for all God's got. I've been watching some of these videos going around, particularly this beautiful one about the, uh, the song of the blessing over nations, deeply moving, especially when the, the, the people all gather together and you see, you hear all those voices, it's so moving. And as I've watched that, I thought, Lord, you're doing something special. Are we going to see revival? Are we going to see revival? Yesterday uh, in, the, in the press, there was a report that in the United Kingdom, one in four people are now tuning and uh, joining in in church services on a Sunday morning. Oh, Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. His church needs to be ready. Brothers and sisters, prepare yourself well. And finally, number four, they went in together. Right at the beginning of this passage, it speaks of that lovely sentence, Joshua and all the people. God didn't save us into an individualistic life, an isolated Christian life. I know it's like that for some at present. Some are now coming out of lockdown, which is such a great joy. But he saved us into a family. And as we go, we pass into this way we've not been before. We pass in together. I'm not sure about you, but I can't wait for the moment when we can gather as one again. I can't wait for that first legal hug. Or, as they do in Dubai, where we spent a lot of our, our time, you arrive at a meeting and you get greeted with a, a kiss on either cheek as you welcomed in. Can't wait for those moments again. And even though we might be in this unusual time of isolation and we're apart. Let's not forget that God's called us into a family and into togetherness. Joshua and all the people. Let's not lose the bigger picture. We have promises 
We have promises we need to hold on to. We know God is going ahead of us. His presence is with us. Brothers and sisters, prepare well. Get those rhythms. Prepare well so that when we together, we'll see such a change in all of us. And lastly, let's cross over together. I love it in this final part of this passage where Joshua speaks to the people and says, prepare yourself. And he says, for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. I'm not sure all that lies ahead of us, but I'm certain God's going to do wonders in the months and the years ahead. So today, may God bless you and keep you. Grow in him, stay in him, keep the bigger picture until we are together again. God bless you across the nations. Bye for now. Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the forgiveness we have in him and that there is nothing that can separate us from you. All our sins, shame, guilt has been paid for by Jesus. Thank you, God, for giving us your promises of eternal security, death been defeated. Jesus is with us till the end. Jesus is building his church and Jesus is ever interceding for us. Father, let our faith arise that we may take hold of these promises. Let our eyes be fixed on you, God, and you will show us the way. And the peace of Christ will settle all uncertainties. You, O oh God, who are rich in love and gracious, help us to cross over. Help us to prepare ourselves well. For you are doing a wonderful thing. You have called us in this together. Keep us, we pray, keep us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ, our Saviour's name. Amen. So that's it, church, for another week. Um, but church doesn't start and finish with Sunday. I hope you believe that. Church is a, a life thing. We journey with people together. There are so many ways of doing that. Let me encourage you. If you're already part of the church, reach out, connect. If you need help, reach out to someone. If you want to serve someone, just go for it, reach out. If you're new and exploring the Christian faith, there's lots of content on our YouTube channel. Go to our Instagram, um, go to our website. There's more information about the Christian faith we'd love to help you get to know Jesus better in these days see you soon bye oh and one more thing if you know of a guy called Tony Ballantyne if you're part of the church community can you send him some love and say a massive thank you if you'll notice we get words up on the screen when we worship um, that takes hours and hours and hours of Tony's time he does it manually every week so send them some love and a thank you. Thank you so much, Tony.